A lot of you are probably wondering what is attached to me. All right, babe. I think it's time to tell them. Tell them what? Why we quit traveling full time. We're gonna tell you guys why we spent eight months building our camper van to travel for a month and then quit full time travel. We are living here in Texas, a state we didn't even plan on stopping through. Yeah. Yeah. And we're not traveling right now. Instead of explaining all of this to you and telling you the story, we're just gonna take you through a week in our lives and show you what's going on. Brian and I are making the best of our current situation and we're enjoying Texas as much as we can, but unfortunately we spend most of our time these days at doctor's appointments. I'm taking out my piercing so that I don't explode in the hyperbaric chamber. Well then let me hold the bottom quick. This is easy to grab the bottom. One I don't know if I crush you. Babe, are you joking? Mm. I'm just gonna hold it though. I'm not on your skin, right? Goodbye, diamonds. You're a whole new human. I need to see it. There what? you go. And how do you feel? So this hole in my face will probably be there forever. This Good is mark. my first step in the hyperbaric chamber and not exploding and exploding the buildings around me, which apparently happens. Woo! First hyperbaric treatment. The hyperbaric is going to help kill the infection that the doctors believe is dormant in my body when it wants to be and then sporadically when we're traveling a month into it decides to be a full-on infection and break out of my body. Nicolette literally can't have anything in the chamber that she wasn't born with. So this little cutie's first trip to Mr. Barrett. hyperbaric chamber my first time ever <laughs> my ears still haven't popped so the chamber is really interesting going down really sucks so they put you in the tube your ears are just crackling and that's really the only like real thing I can feel besides like the pure isolation that you feel it's so isolating as soon as they lock the chamber there's people talking all around you and you have no idea what they're saying. But when they come talk to you, they pick up a phone and they can talk to you. And right now my ears are just crackling. I'm supposed to be like trying to make them pop. It feels weird. It really does feel like you're like under the sea or something because you're that not one with earth anymore. An hour and a half, I watched a movie. Then it's time to bring you back up and you can totally feel in your ears all of the pressure just being released and it's it's crazy. Everybody's different. Some people's ears pop immediately. Mine still have not. So if I'm yelling, that's probably why. I'm kind of hoping I'm on death for the rest of my life. I'm gonna give a 10 out of 10 to my first hyperbaric treatment. I feel great. Yeah, a lot of crackling. I feel like really refreshed and like I feel better than I have in months. I have to go five days a week, uh, an hour and a half each chest room. That's a lot. Went 33 feet below sea level and then I came back up. It's scary, but so worth it. I have a really good feeling about it. When we do break away from the doctor's appointment atmosphere, we do go out in nature. And I think it's really important to get away and enjoy the beautiful sights that Texas has to offer. I kind of wanted to show you the setting here at Palo Duro Canyon. You see our little home. Beautiful setting. Beautiful mountains in the background. Nicolette's laying out here. I know she's excited about that because she is on bed rest. Looks like she's, she's now on desert rest. This is my pick line and I got this put in at the hospital so that I can take my IV antibiotics. This is vancomycin, which is one of the strongest antibiotics you can you can have. And it has a lot of effects on the body. Getting used to this and getting my body used to this vancomycin was really difficult. So these antibiotics have taken over my life. It starts at nine or 10 in the morning and it doesn't end until 3 p.m. in the afternoon. And then I do the same exact thing at night which starts 9 or 10 p.m. It does not end until about 3 in the morning. If you have a infection such as osteomyelitis, this is something that you're gonna need to do to get rid of it. The first thing that you do is get an alcohol swab and then I take my first flush, which this just basically keeps the line open. Once that's ready, I open my port on my arm and you never wanna touch this part. I have to be really careful 
to not touch this like ever. This is possibly my last time I get the final answer for that tomorrow of doing this. And I don't even know like what it's going to be like to not have to do this. It's been a longer journey for yeah. both of us than we expected. You know, three months ago when we were like, oh, let's go travel full time. We, we never expected to have to stop anywhere and uh, handle medical things. But it seems like life makes these choices for you. And, you know, it's had its benefits and it's had its downfalls. I think one of the biggest benefits is that this might make Nicolette's quality of life and extend her life. And like, this might just help Nicolette's health overall more than any other thing that could have happened. We're receiving really good health care here. And I say we're because we're kind of in this together. Brian's been up with me every single night, making sure that at two or three in the morning, she was annoyed. I wake up and I take the medicine off because you can't just leave this port open. You cannot fall asleep and let that go. So Brian gets these out of the cooler. We take them out of the cooler that we have to keep them in like an hour before I do them. So that's another thing we have to remember. We have to remember to take them it. out, take them out an hour before and then do them and then do it all again in like you know six hours later so right now it's just going into me i don't really notice anything it doesn't feel like anything so right now we're just gonna wait this fall will be done in about 45 minutes fall is done it's about 11 30 and i'm already feeling super tired because this medicine makes you super tired so now i'm gonna put the big ball on air bubbles there and I have to get those out. So I just hit it with something. And connect. So this thing is gonna take like two and a half hours and I'm not gonna be able to stay up. I'm already like falling asleep. So I'm gonna set an alarm. My second doctor's appointment of the week and this is my infectious disease doctor and I might be getting my pick line out today. I'm connected to so many things so it'll be really nice to get this off. I'm getting my pick line out so no more IV antibiotics, no, no more setting an alarm for two o'clock in the morning and making sure it's taken out. It's been six weeks of these antibiotics. So that line actually went up Nicolette's arm around her shoulder kind of and in i don't know if it's the aorta or right near there a vein that drips into nicolette's heart so a major vein not and, in the heart but, it's but a right near vein it from the heart yeah wow that was really quick oh i didn't uh, even know you were taking it yeah it's gone did it yeah. feel weird that's it look at it wow one less tube in me but they gave nicolette a gift to remember texas by everything from a kitchen rag to magnets which we needed for a fridge so cute i love the air fresheners it was very sweet of them to be thoughtful like that they don't didn't have to be like that what is this machine that's attached to me even though it's very vulnerable i'm going to tell you guys what this machine is today so this is a wound back this is both my nemesis and a lifesaver to me this machine is attached to my butt and you can follow the tube from my butt to this canister i help twice a week with actually changing out the wound back what happened was Nicolette had about a quarter sized wound open up due to an infection. To be clear, it wasn't quarter size when this all started. The wound actually was tiny, tiny pinhole. And what it was, was an infection pocket leaking from an area right by my pelvic bone. And it, my body found a way to leak all of it out. So if you're wondering how it turned into quarter size wound, well, the doctor cut it out. My first appointment, really took me by surprise. It went from, hi, nice to meet you. I'm your doctor to, I'm going to cut your butt open and then we're gonna have to cauterize it because it won't stop bleeding. It was traumatizing, you guys. The doctor actually went in. I was not asleep, fully aware. They did numb it with numbing medication, thank God. With no warning, he goes in with a scalpel and takes the infection out, literally. The biggest rush of pain came over my body. I just couldn't even believe he just did that. I was angry. Then he started holding the infection in his hand and saying, oh, this is phlegmon. That's what they call it. And I just took it all out of you. And how could I be mad at that? What the wound back does is it actually 
the foam that you put on the wound and it's actually constantly sucking out any infectious liquid. And it's also using that power to suck your tissue closed. It is actually kind of amazing. It works to not only keep all of the bacteria and infectious liquids out of your wound, it works to close your tissue and promote healing. I have a dormant infection in my body that decided to act up a month into our full-time travel. While we were on cloud nine, living our dream. We never expected this to happen, but it did. Life is always going to throw circumstances at you that aren't ideal and you have to make the best of them and adapt so you can figure out the reason for them because there's always a reason.